At this point in my life, I consider myself an avid foodie. And I've never been afraid to try new foods either. In this particular tale, I talked to you about how accepting a free meal came with a price. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. I was well into my uh, law enforcement career, and at this, and for this particular story, I was assigned to the investigations division as a detective. And one of the roles as a uh, detective is being on calls on any given weekend. Well, this story, I happened to be on call this weekend. This also happened to be the weekend of one of my buddy's engagement parties. He had called me up the night before and asked if I wanted to come to this party. And I told him, you know, that I was on call. And I said, you know, I'd have to pass on this maybe next time. And he's like, dude, come on. This is a grand opening of this new, this new idea. It's called Mongolian barbecue. And if you're not familiar with Mongolian barbecue, as I'll explain that here in a, in a second, but, and again, I told him, man, dude, I appreciate it, man. Congratulations. But I, you know, I'm on call. I can't, you know, I can't do it. Plus I've been busy. It's been a busy week and I'm sure it's going to be a busy weekend. And you know, I, I can't do it. So then he threw, the last, I mean, he, he threw, he knew, he knew me pretty well at this point. All right. And he threw the F, the F word at me. And that F word is free. Yeah, that's right. He said, dude, come on. It's a free meal, man. It's on me. All right. Food and drinks are on me. And I said, well, okay, I, I'll, 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 I'll go. I'll, I can make this. I can make this, but I can't drink. All right. I can't drink because I'll be on call. So I accepted the invitation. So I plan my day so that I can kind of arrange to meet with them around 7 o'clock, between 7 and 7.30, uh, downtown Chicago, all right? And I'm coming from the south suburbs. And like I mentioned before, I haven't eaten anything all day. So, man, I was really, really excited about this, uh, about this event. So I finally get to the restaurant. Um, and again, it was just, it was difficult finding parking in itself. If you're not familiar with Chicago driving and parking, it's, it's quite an experience. So it took me a while to find a parking spot, so I get there. Place was huge, right? This place was a, was a man. It was just wide open, and I walk in. And now, if you're not familiar with what Mongolian barbecue is, let me give you a quick description of what it is. It's a it's like an all you can eat buffet, but when you walk into the bar, everything is raw. Okay, so you got like all the vegetables you could think of on one end, and then everything uh, as far as you know surf and turf, like everything from the sea to everything that walks on land is out there, and it's all raw out there at your disposal. Okay, now the objective the object is is you get a bowl and you go up to this bar and you just take whatever you want. Okay, from both sides, vegetables and all the raw meat you could think of. You put it in this bowl and you take it up to this counter, you know, off to the side. And behind the counter, there's this big fucking, like this big flat steel grill. And there's somebody behind there that will come and pick up your bowl and throw everything on top of this grill and cook it up with these big ass sticks. They look like broomsticks and they're cooking it up for you. And when they think it's ready or good enough for you, they'll pull it off and put it in the bowl and throw it right back at you. I was like a pig in shit with this new concept, man. I was, man, I was loving it, man. I was loading up on vegetables, meat, seafood, everything, beef, pork, lamb, you name it, chicken. I was loving it, man. So this was probably my third or fourth trip up to the bar and the stomach, the midsection started making some strange noises, man. And I got, you know, the, my midsection was angry. So I'm up there at this bar with this bowl full of food, man. I got a shitload of food in there. And I just had to leave it there and try to find the nearest bathroom. So I'm looking and right and I and and I see I see the bathroom. So I start heading over that way. And my buddy stops. He's like, "Hey man, we're you know we're gonna go do the announcement. We're gonna go do a toast. Come on, we're heading over there." I'm like, "Oh shit, man, come on." I'm like, "All right, let's go." So I head over there. I head over to the table and you know they're getting ready to prepare their their toast, their speech. Everybody's gathering around and I'm sweating, man. I am I am in so much agony and pain right now. I'm sweating and somebody asked me, he's like, "Hey man, you okay?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, you know, I think it was one of those peppers." Well, I didn't have any peppers because I knew better. My stomach was was like I said, it was fucking angry at me and I had to shit so fucking bad. It was it was on beyond belief. So I thought of the next best thing. I pretended like my phone was ringing. I reached in and I pulled it out. Like, 
Oh, Mac, you know, I do one of those numbers. Like, hey, it's work. You know, I, I, I got to take this, right? And I, I grabbed my coat and I started walking towards the door, right? Didn't even say goodbye. I mean, I just, I just kept on walking, found my car, and started heading home. Well, about halfway home, I was on the Dan Ryan. And again, like I mentioned before, if you've never been to Chicago, it's hit or miss. Traffic can either be on your side or it could stop you right in your tracks. Well, tonight was pretty good, but I know earlier there was a traffic accident. There were some cars up there, so I'm like, well, hopefully it's cleared by then, and it was. So I'm heading home, and I see a viaduct, right, a bridge, and I, I drive underneath it because there was a car parked here that was stalled or something, and I remember seeing it on the way in. So I pulled up behind it, and I put my squad, you know, my lights, my emergency lights on just to play it safe, and I parked so that I was behind it where I could kind of shield myself because I was going to go right there. I had no choice. So I come out of the car, and I pull around, and I, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking around and I'm like, okay, my pants come down and I, I'm squatting, right? And I don't, now I don't know if you've ever seen the Discovery Channels or any of those like nature, nature shows where you see uh, the animals going to like, they're like in Africa and they're going to the watering hole and like the, the gazelles are like looking around, you know, they're sipping and looking around. Well, I was like a gazelle looking around to making sure nobody was, was going to, you know, catch me shitting about shitting myself right there on the Dan Ryan uh, on the side of the road there. So I'm, I'm pulling, I'm, you know, I make this quick. I was trying to make this as quick as possible. And in effort to do so, it was very explosive and it splattered everywhere. Not to gross you out, but you know, this, this was, there was no saving this. My pants were ruined at this point. The second thing I realized was I didn't bring anything to clean myself up with. No Charmin, no, you know, nothing, no, you know, no toilet paper, not, no napkins, no nothing. So the next best thing I had to use, the pants, they were ruined already. I might as well use it to finish off the job. So I did what I had to do. I cleaned myself up, pulled the belt off, threw it in my car because I let the, the car door open. And I noticed I had my gym bag right there. So I, I reached for my dream gym bag. I opened it up. I'm like, yes, my old gym shorts. You know, they were you know dirty, sweaty, but I didn't give a shit at this point. So I put in, you know, reached out and I put them on. And I'm like, okay, went around and got in the car and off I left. All I kept thinking about during that time was, man, I hope nobody drives by and, and asks if I'm okay. Even worse, my biggest fear was having another police car, or even worse, a state trooper pulling by and asking if I needed any help. Luckily, nobody did. So what did I learn about this episode? Well, one thing I learned is that just because, well, one of the things I've learned from this uh, episode, strike that. one of the valuable things I learned from this episode was when you see things out there, just stay away from it because you don't know how long it's been sitting out there. The second thing about that, about that even that same point, when you have surf and turf sitting next to each other, it's probably not a good idea to have them cooked right next to each other at the same time. And then the second thing, well, it could be the third thing. The other cool thing I learned about myself that day was always keep a gym bag in your car, dirty or not. Always keep it there when you go out because you never know when you might need a spare out of clothes. Hey, this is the Spaniard. Thanks for tuning in, not for tuning out and enjoying my stories. Hopefully you uh, got a chance to laugh a little bit. Join me next time where I get to share some more embarrassing and shocking stories of Tales from the Shitter with the Spaniard. Spaniard out. Ciao.